so I've done quite a few videos on abortion over the past year. But today I was reading Leviticus and I watched a video immediately after my Bible reading. And not only did it tie together with what I was reading, but it also made a very obvious connection between Satanism, feminism, and abortion. And I just had to share this with you guys. This is a Satanist feminist who advocates for abortion being interviewed by Jesse Lee Peterson. Now in Leviticus 18, we see a set of rules laid out prohibiting certain abominable sexual sins. And the first half of the chapter is pretty much solely dedicated to incest, and God is prohibiting Israel from participating in incest. Then if we start at verse 20, we see a number of other things prohibited. Verse 20 says, Moreover, thou shalt not lie carnally with thy neighbor's wife to defile thyself with her. So adultery is prohibited. Verse 21, And thou shalt not let any of thy seed pass through the fire to Moloch, neither shalt thou profane the name of thy God. I am the Lord. So verse 21 is what would prohibit abortion. This is the killing of your child, and specifically it was the sacrifice of a child to the demonic idol Moloch who was worshipped as a god by the heathen nations that surrounded the nation of Israel and also lived in the land of Canaan prior to Israel claiming the land. Verse 22 prohibits homosexuality by saying, Thou shalt not lie with mankind as with womankind. It is abomination. And verse 23 prohibits bestiality. Verses 24 and 25 are very interesting. They say, Defile not ye yourselves. In any of these things, for in all of these things the nations are defiled, which I cast out before you, and the land is defiled. Therefore I do visit the iniquity thereof upon it, and the land itself vomiteth out her inhabitants. So God literally puts the sins of the land that the people are causing back on the land, and the land spits out the inhabitants. Verse 26 says, Ye shall therefore keep my statutes and my judgments, and shall not commit any of these abominations, neither any of your own nation, nor any stranger that sojourn with you. And this is actually why he had the Israelites destroy the people who lived in the land of Canaan, because they were committing all of these abominable sins and worshiping idols and were just evil and rebellious to God in every way imaginable. And as a punishment, God destroyed them utterly, or just about, anyway. Israel was supposed to destroy them utterly, but in some cases, they didn't quite do that. So what does all of that have to do with this feminist Satanist promoting abortion? Well, I think this video will speak volumes about the state of America and the Western modern world in general. Welcome to the Fallen State. I am Jesse Lee Peterson. Thank you so much for being with me. Tonight we're talking about feminism, Satanism, and abortion. Ooh. <laughs> I have with me Allie Kellogg. She is an archaeologist. Right? I went to school for archaeology. Oh, okay. And I'm an educator now. Educator at the Holocaust Museum in Los Angeles. She's also a feminist as spokesperson for the Satanic Temple of Los Angeles. Mm -hmm. Thank you so much for coming. Thank you for having me. I want to point out that she's not just a member of the Satanic Temple, she's actually a spokesperson for them. So these people often appear as just a regular person, just sort of representing their own views and when they can, the views of their collective group. But in fact, she is a designated spokesperson. And you have to be ready for these people. They want you to underestimate them and to not realize that you're a skilled debater because then they can blindside you with their arguments. And I think you'll see here that while her agenda is rather plain and right out in the open, she tries her best to seem genuine. Were you brought, brought up in a religious environment in your home? It was divided. My mom is um, Italian. My, f my mom's side of my family is Italian Roman Catholic. Um, so I grew up I went to, for preschool, a Catholic preschool. Mm -hmm. um, they started us on the Bible pretty early on there. We went to church, not every Sunday, but some. And my dad is Buddhist, so completely oh, okay. different side of the fence. 
So she was not brought up in the ways of the Lord, in other words, okay? I find it very hard to believe that they started super early on the Bible. I know a lot of Catholics, and I don't know very many of them that know much about the Bible. Mostly only priests and other clergy members and Catholic apologists. Everyone else who's a Catholic, they actually, for the most part, know very little about the Bible. What happened that you decided, I don't want to be a Catholic. I'm not a Buddhist. I'm a Satanist. I think deep down I always didn't really believe in God. Um, I thought that it was uh, kind of a cop-out for us to assume that our will was up to somebody else and we just had to kind of carry out our life assuming everything would work out. And once I kind of started reading about religions around the world um, and how similar they are and how different they are, I kind of just didn't really identify with a single one. So which was it? Which turned her off on religion? Were they too similar or were they too different? I hope you caught that. Whenever we compare any two things, we look at their differences and similarities. That's what a comparison is. So there's absolutely no chance that I'm buying this whole comparative religious studies turned me into a Satanist argument, okay? Um, it would have to be flushed out a lot more than that and presented in a much clearer way to sound at all credible. But what I will point out is that she considers herself to be an atheist Satanist. And I think it's worth mentioning at this point, 2 Timothy 3.13, But evil men and seducers shall wax worse and worse, deceiving and being deceived. And that's what this person is. She is an evil person and seductress in terms of intellectually leading people away from the Lord and deceiving them into rebelling against God. And it's the people who are deceived who are also deceivers, because Satan has them deceived, as we'll see in just a moment. But I embrace all of them as sort of creations of the human mind throughout history. And so, you, so you're not rejecting religion? No, that's, that's not what, um, what the Satanic Temple does. It's absolutely what the Satanic Temple is doing. To say that religion is the creation of mankind is to reject religion. We're well, not advocating against any particular religious point. We just want to see a separation of church and state. So important to make this point. They want to see a separation of church and state. So this is, again, a spokesperson for the Satanic Temple telling us outright what their plans are and what they want. And what they want is to separate American law and the American government from Christianity. They're not trying to separate it from Buddhism or Hinduism or Islam. They're entirely anti-Christ and anti-Christian. And it's apparent by the fact that they've chosen the villain of Christian scripture, the Christian Bible, Satan, as their role model and mascot. After all, who is Satan against? He tempted Christ in the wilderness. He went into Judas to betray Christ. He was basically responsible for not only the fall of mankind, which led to mankind having to be redeemed through Jesus, but also the crucifixion of Jesus. And we're told that if the world hated Jesus, that it will also hate us. And that couldn't be more evident than it is with people like her. So what's appealing about being a Satanist. For me, we identify with the story of Lucifer in the Bible as sort of um, a metaphor and an allegory for the work that we do, which is arguing against um, the separation of church and state. We don't want to see our country become a theocracy. And particularly as a woman, I, I would like to have autonomy and control over my own body. And that's shorthand for abortion, okay? When they say they want rights over their own body, they want freedom to control their own body, what they mean is, I want to kill my children, and I'd like you to endorse me killing my children and provide me a free way of doing it if I can't afford it myself. Because they say it's health care, and they advocate that health care services are a right to all people. And this is just part of the cultural battle taking place in the United States of America as we speak. And again, in the world in general. Evil does not only exist here, trust me. You worship Satan? No, so we are a, um, we are not the church of Satan. We are a non-theistic religion. 
But you could see why people would be confused because you're not the church of Satan, but you are the temple of Satan. And that's practically the same thing, is it not? So we don't actually believe any metaphysical element or any spiritual element that there is a Satan or there is a God. But again, we, um, we honor the metaphor of what Lucifer did in the Bible, which was challenging authority. And why would you do that if you're in no way, shape or form connected to Satan? So are you guys atheists? I can't speak for every member of the temple. I think some would identify as atheists, some would be agnostic, um, some really don't have a stance. What does Satan believe? I th he challenged God's authority and he probably wasn't happy with um, the, the will that God was sending him to do these things like killing people. That's not actually found anywhere in scripture that Satan was unhappy with his job or that Satan didn't want to kill people. In fact, all we find in scripture is Satan wanting to hurt people. You remember the story of Job, right? So yeah, Satan was all too happy to destroy Job, to kill his family, to ruin his health, to destroy his business, and to leave him with nothing. The view of Satan and Lucifer that she's presenting here is actually consistent with Gnosticism which glorifies Lucifer as the light bringer or light bearer, a Promethean style character who comes and gives knowledge to man. And they believe that we can only be saved through a secret knowledge. So the fact that she would have Gnostic views makes a lot more sense than just being a general atheist Satanist because that's really like a contradiction in and of itself. But I think we'll see very clearly why she identifies with Satan. So I think him and some of the angels got together at some point and went to God and said, why do you have all this power? And he, um, our interpretation, at least mine, is that um, God probably felt threatened having his authority challenged. So he cast uh, Lucifer and those angels out. Right. Typical of a Gnostic, she believes that God is petty and childlike and that when challenged, he just threw a temper tantrum and cast out the angels, okay? Uh, they don't recognize the ultimate wisdom and power and goodness and love of the Almighty Creator, and they have a fundamentally horrible understanding of God. So again, this makes a lot of sense. And that's uh, kind of how we feel. We're, we're outcasts. We feel like we've always been on the, the fringes of society, and never really fit in somewhere, and that certainly stands in politics and ideology. Do you personally challenge God's authority? I don't believe in God, so I don't challenge his authority. You do challenge his authority, and you're also lying. So in Romans 1, for those of you who aren't familiar, Paul talks about idolaters, and modern atheists would fall into this group. They suppress the knowledge of God within themselves. Paul says, when they knew God, they glorified him not as God, neither were they thankful, but became vain in their imaginations, and their foolish hearts were darkened. Professing themselves to be wise, they became fools. And keep in mind this whole thing about Lucifer bringing them the knowledge. Now they think they're wise. And what was part of the knowledge? Part of the knowledge was do what thou wilt. It was the Aleister Crowley credo that you can impose your own will that God does not have the ultimate say in who you are, which is a lie, of course. God has created you for a reason. But in Romans 1, God tells us that there are no atheists, okay? It says very plainly that the invisible things of God are clearly seen from the creation of the world, being understood by the things that are made, even his eternal power and Godhead, so that they are without excuse. See, they have the knowledge of God, but they do not retain the knowledge of God. And verse 28 says, Even as they did not like to retain God in their knowledge, God gave them over to a reprobate mind to do those things which are not convenient. And then they were filled with all unrighteousness. So, in short, God does not believe in atheists, okay? God's word tells us that there is no such thing. And it also accurately predicts that they are liars being filled with all unrighteousness. Do Satan has authority? Um, no, because I don't have... believe in Satan. I don't believe that either actually exists. I also don't believe that for a second. So the other satanic groups, do they believe in Satan? Some do. Some do. Mm -hmm. Do you guys associate with them at all? Mm -mm. You don't? 
I'm not quite understanding. If you don't believe in Satan and you don't challenge his then authority, how are we a religion? What, right. It's hard when we uh, grow up in a culture that's um, so heavily circulated around Judeo-Christian beliefs. The idea of having a religion and being a religious person, but not having a god to worship or a monotheistic basis, uh, doesn't make sense to a lot of people. Because you're not a religion, okay? That's why you don't have any spiritual beliefs. You say that means you're not a religion. And if that is true, why call yourself a temple? So it's a hard concept to grasp, and even myself sometimes I'm like, well, why, why, do we, why did we choose this person? You chose your father the devil because you were of your father the devil. And if the fact that you call yourself a Satanist and then say that you don't believe in Satan, if that fact is confusing to you, then yes, obviously you're a very confused person because you've devoted your entire life to something that you don't even understand. Uh, this figure as our mascot, um, but again, it's um, the story of what he did uh, is very, it, it's paralleled to what we're doing and the activism that we do at the temple. I completely agree with that. What she's doing is absolutely of the devil, as we're about to see. Are you pretending to be religious so you can become a religious organization in order to challenge other religions? Bingo, right? <laughs> he just saw through that one. They're pretending and calling themselves a religious organization so that they can attack other religious groups. Makes sense to me. We have seven tenets of the temple. They're just rules, just like the Ten Commandments. And we are uh, religious in the respect that we want to honor and adhere to those throughout our lives. I'm sorry, but everyone who follows rules that does not make them religious, okay? Everyone in the world follows rules of some kind. Do you believe in good and evil? Good or evil? Um, I think there's gray area in between. I don't think it's so black and white, but I mean, I do, I believe there are good people and bad people. What's the gray area? I think that's where the idea of sin comes in. People get lost somewhere along the way in their life and they're generally cast out. People succumb to um, drug addiction or theft. Um, things that maybe they had no choice but to fall into those. Temptations that lead them into sin. Those situations, um, generally the, that's seen as sinning, so that would be considered being bad. Yeah, that would, that would be one example of being bad. Right. Um, I think that falls into that gray area where people along the way in the path of their life, they, they kind of lose their path and they might make bad choices, but they can fall back on the path. And I don't, I don't personally feel like I need um, God to do that when I've had hardship in my life. I never felt like I had to rely on a higher power. I felt like it was always up to me. Notice the topic shift there. Obviously, those sins are evil. They're evil to God, and anyone with objective morality would automatically realize that these things are leading to destruction and death, which is what the Bible tells you sin does. And it's not about whether a person can get back on track after having an addiction or whatever. That doesn't make us good or evil. A person who lies is a liar. A person who steals is a thief, okay? A person who goes and has sex with other women when they're married is an adulterer. So you're a sinner right there. It doesn't matter if you get back on a good track or not. And this is what subjective morality is all about. I'm a pretty good person, that's a pretty bad person, whatever. The Bible says that all have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. And that is why the just live by faith. Because only by faith in Jesus Christ can they be redeemed from their own sinful nature. Now her saying that she doesn't feel like she needs God to make things right, this is just her making herself her own God. And that's what Satanists are really all about at heart. The Holocaust, was that an evil act or good or gray area? Certainly an evil act. But you don't believe in evil? Um, not evil in the biblical sense, but um, in a bad sense. I believe there's people that are malicious and they have malicious intent and they're selfish and they only have their own interests at heart, and I think that's evil. Well, that sounds a lot like Satan, doesn't it? They're malicious, they're selfish, they only have their own interests at heart. Satan was cast out because he wanted to be God. He wanted the glory and the power. And thus he was cast out and fell like lightning from heaven, according to Isaiah 14, 12. But she has romanticized Satan into something good. Even though, again, stories like Job, right? 
Job did not provoke Satan, and Satan still took joy in destroying Job's life. Even though Job was generally a righteous man as far as men go, as far as humans go, that is. He was not perfect, but he was generally a very righteous man. And he certainly did nothing to Satan. And Satan just couldn't wait to destroy him, which is similar to what Peter tells us. He says that our adversary, the devil, walketh about as a roaring lion, seeking whom he may devour. So you get right down to it, and this person does believe in evil. And she believes in evil pretty much the same way that we do in this regard. You're calling bad evil? I guess, but I think um, our definition of evil is probably different. I think you speak from um, a religious standpoint, from your, your faith, that um, evil is something tied to Satan, perhaps. Um, something that is not godly, right. not heavenly. For me, um, the two are a bit synonymous, but I believe they're evil people, but I don't think it has anything to do with, uh, with God necessarily. Are you evil or good or great? I think I'm a good person. This cracks me up. She's a good person. This Satanist is a really good person, guys. This is just so funny because unsaved people will always tell you they're a good person. They could be Jeffrey Dahmer. I'm sure Hitler thought he was a great guy at heart and that he was really just misunderstood. Okay, um, really, guys, everybody thinks they're a good person and God says none are good but God. You're a good person. And what made you good? How is that you're a good person? I care for others tremendously and go out of my way to do so. Yeah, hey, Satan does too. He really went out of his way to care for Job, like I said. And he definitely went out of his way to care for Jesus for 40 days and nights in the wilderness. And I, um, even the, the work that we do in the temple, we're all, um, we're putting our lives on the line and our reputations on the line to do this. Right. And um, if I was apathetic towards the issues, I would just sit back and hope someone else was doing the good work. And by good work, she means promoting abortion. So let's get to that. Um, I read uh, on your website that women, Satan, and feminism are closely connected to one another. Uh, can you explain that to me? Mm -hmm. It's the same thing you look at throughout history. You look at things like Satan and you look at women. Um, the two have been persecuted without real inquiry into why they're persecuted. It's just sort of an assumption. It's something we're told to do. Satan is definitely not persecuted by human beings, and by definition, really, he cannot be. In fact, he persecutes human beings. In Scripture, Satan tempts people, and then once they sin and they do what he was tempting them to do, he becomes their accuser. So he essentially sort of entraps you <laughs> in sin. It's like if a person sold you drugs, you buy them, then he pulls out a badge, tells you he's a cop, and arrests you. You get to court, and he's also the prosecuting attorney. And luckily for us, he's not the judge, okay? God is the judge. And for all of our sins, Jesus has already made the payment. But that payment is only applied to us when we repent and believe on the Lord Jesus Christ. But she also feels like women have been persecuted for forever. So let's hear more about that. Uh, especially in uh, any society that's um, heavily Judeo-Christian in values. Christianity has persecuted women, Satan, and feminism? I'd say so. So women are close to Satan. They can identify with Satan. Notice that she's saying especially societies that have Judeo-Christian values. They've especially persecuted women. <laughs> so yeah. But she's not particularly anti-Christian, though. Right. Um, no, I wouldn't say that. I think us in our situation, we don't identify with Satan, but what he, the act that he did in the Bible is something that we're experiencing today, uh, challenging theocracy, challenging authority um, where there shouldn't be. So how long have you been a feminist? Probably ever since I kind of could comprehend what a feminist was or what it meant to be a feminist. And what is it? A feminist? Uh -huh. Just equal rights. I'm not um, burning my bra or I don't hate <laughs> men, but I believe that there is a, a huge difference between equal rights. Women don't have access to a lot of the things that men do. Um, we are treated very unfairly in society, culturally, um, and that's a lot of what our concern is, is that the church steps in there and has a, lot, a huge role in that. I think once I could first kind of perceive what that was and those issues and they started to scare me as a woman as a US citizen that 
um, particularly men, because of their ideological standpoint, want to control my body and my personal life. That's very frightening to me. And how do men want to control your body and your personal life? There's a cultural element where things like our sexuality, basic biological, physiological elements are deemed unclean. Um, there's reproductive Break that rights. down for me first. What do you mean by that? But, I don't understand what you just said. Um, well, in terms of Christianity, Catholicism, you see that the story of Eve, she was sort of the first person who bit from the apple from the tree of knowledge. She was the first one, I suppose, who interacted with Satan. And Orthodox Judaism, women can't pray or oftentimes eat uh, in the same places that the men do. Oh, um, in Islam, women have to cover their bodies. And you go to, we have that here in any major Judeo-Christian society, you go to a tribal society somewhere, you'll see the same thing when women are menstruating, they have to go live on the outskirts of the village. But I don't think you'll find that in America today. In America today, women can do whatever they want. Correct. A woman can do basically anything a man can do in the United States of America. On the other hand, women can't drive in Saudi Arabia. They have to have their entire bodies covered at all times when in public. Their husbands can beat them. Okay, in countries like Afghanistan, little girls are killed for going to school. Let that sink in for a minute. Little girls are killed for going to school. Women in America and in the modern westernized world in general, Western Europe, Canada, Australia, women are doing pretty good in those places, okay? They're doing really good in those places, in fact. In the Muslim world, not so good, okay? Pretty horrible for women in those places. So what exactly can women not do in America? Well, let's find out. Not exactly. Give me something that they can't do in America today. There's places where you can't get an abortion, or at least not without scrutiny. Not without scrutiny. So in other words, everywhere in America, you can get an abortion if you're a woman. There's nowhere that you were deprived of the supposed right to kill your child. I'd say that's above and beyond what any woman could reasonably ask for in terms of women's rights. We'll let you murder your child as long as they haven't been born yet. You can vote, you can work in any type of job, your rights are protected by law. You can sue a person if they sexually harass you or, say, discriminate against you in the workplace. You can sue them by law. But God forbid you should receive scrutiny. <laughs> Someone should look down on you because you murder your unborn child. And this is where we're at with liberal, leftist, crazy snowflakes, okay, who believe that they should be able to get into their safe space bubbles and no one should have the right to say anything that offends them. And they're actually taking away your right to free speech so that they can have this made-up right to not be offended or receive any scrutiny, ever. No matter how terrible of a thing they might be doing, like, for example, getting an abortion. In fact, there are still many states inside the United States that allow third trimester abortions, and you can get an abortion right up into basically the last day of your pregnancy. And as horrible as that is, you can still do that in many places in the United States of America. And we need to be resisting this and speaking out against it. As you can see, evil hasn't gone to sleep. Evil is still working night and day advocating for the murder of children. The mass murder. She said the Holocaust was evil. But they say that the Holocaust killed about 6 million Jews. And we've killed way more babies than that in this country between 50 and 60 million. So if the Holocaust was evil, clearly abortion is very evil. And if you have to reach all the way out to women should be able to have abortions without scrutiny, then clearly this doesn't have anything to do with women's rights. It has to do with Satanists advocating the murder of children. Big surprise there, right? Since Aleister Crowley and all of the modern prominent Satanists have written about child sacrifice. And since Satan was a murderer from the beginning, as Jesus tells us in John chapter 8, and you, the child of Satan over here, is, guess what, also a murderer? Yeah, real shocking. I think the connections here are pretty apparent. 
But I see that this video has already gone past a half an hour, and if I continue on, it'll be at least an hour. So I'm going to stop now and make this part one, and I'll make a second video of my analysis of this interview. And in part two, I'll get to really tie these things together and make the point that I truly wanted to make in starting this video in the first place. Uh, so I do hope that you stop back for that. I think this is pretty eye-opening because it's a Satanist in her own words saying many of the things that we've speculated about for years now in the online Christian community. And the connection here between these evil agendas is as plain as day and openly admitted. So thanks to everybody who supports the channel, and God bless you all in Jesus' name.